In this video, I'll show you how to make a uh, table in Excel. We'll put average values in, we'll put uncertainty values in, and then we'll, then we'll make a graph. And the graph will have error bars, among other things. So first, let's say you have some independent variable. Maybe it's height. And so we're going to call that h. And it's in meters. And finally, we can insert the plus or minus symbol to show the uncertainty. So it's uh, recently used for me, but otherwise it's, if you go to, uh, where are we here, go to the very top, click once, and it's right in the bottom left corner, plus or minus, and so maybe my uncertainty is 0 0.4 meters, or 0 0.02, whoops. Okay, and then I double click this line between C and D, you see that icon I have with arrows going off in both sides? I double click the line between the C and the D heading and it auto justifies the width to fit the text. Okay, next I'm going to have as my dependent variable, um, <clears throat> let's say it's time, which I'll call T. I italicize the unit, I'm sorry, the vari variable is italicized. This is in seconds. And I'm going to copy and paste from here. I forgot my unit. Uh oh. See that? My unit is missing on the uncertainty, 0.02 meters. Double click. Plus or minus 0 0.3 seconds, perhaps. And I double click. But I have three trials. I have trial 1, trial 2, and trial 3. And then I'll have an average, um, let's say, average time in seconds, plus or minus, well, no, the uncertainty we'll take care of. So I'm going to highlight all of these, double click, and they all justify so that the text fits the column width. <clears throat> now I want to kind of merge these cells together. So I go to Home, Merge and Center, and then I want to merge these together, and then I want all of this text to be in the middle. So I go to this button and click it a couple times, this one, click it a couple times, and we are off running. I'm going to make the trial one a little smaller and even out the others. Or I could just highlight all three and then choose one length, one size, width, and it'll adjust all three to be the same width. Now I got too many here. I only need these three. And then I want to merge and center the average, like that. Okay, now maybe I should capitalize height and time. Now I enter some values. And you see how these don't all have the right number of decimal places? Sometimes they have two decimal places and they match the uncertainty, but other times, like the point 0.3, it doesn't have enough decimal places and it doesn't match the uncertainty. So what I can do is I can highlight them all under the number tab, I can add and then remove a zero, so they now I'll have they all have two. Okay, and I like to center the text. There we go. Then I enter my trial values. Again, I've got a couple values here. I need to add a decimal and then take it away so it matches the uncertainty of 0.3. And this doesn't have enough places, so I add and take away. Now I'm going to need to find average times, and the way to do this is to say equals average. And then I hit open parentheses, and I choose the values that I want to take the average of. And then I copy that formula and paste it down. And then I will have to come fix the formatting and the uh, rounding here in a moment. Then I'm going to need uncertainty in average time. So let me double click. So how do I get the uncertainty? Well, we're using the, the half range, so we want the maximum of the three and take the difference between that and the minimum, and then we divide that value by 2. So the maximum I can find using max, open parentheses, like this, and then I subtract the minimum of the 3, and then, oops, and then I divide that difference, I've got parentheses, I divide the entire difference by 2. And this is nice because this is a formula we can just copy down, right? Now, uncertainty, we only give it one sig fig, so I'm going to round it to the first place. 
And now that I know where these uncertainties are rounded, now that I know this, the uncertainty has one place, I can go round the time, the average. All of these need one decimal place. Okay. <clears throat> if you want to create borders, you can do outside border, outside border. You can give these an outside border. Outside, outside. Control Y repeats the operation. So now I'm just hitting Control Y on my keyboard. Okay. And maybe I want to copy this and copy this or cut this and put it right there so that now I have the two things um, in the same, you know, sort of, I've got my raw data on the left and I've got my process data on the right. That's a nice delineation of the two. Okay, now I'm ready for the graph. So I do insert. We're going to use a scatter plot, which is this one, under charts. It's the first option, the one with no lines. We want no lines. I right click. Nothing's there because I haven't selected any data. That's exactly what you want. You right click, you choose select data. I add a new series, a new XY value, uh, XY series. And then I click into the X values box and I choose my X's. I click into the Y values box and I choose my Y's. Ooh, kind of an interesting shape I've got to my graph. I add a chart title. I add axis titles. And I make sure in my axis titles that I have height, H, or what's the, my Y axis is time, T in seconds. Notice that I'm not putting any uncertainty. Height, H, in meters. So where does my uncertainty go? Well, I click on a data point, and then I hit the plus, and I choose error bars. Oops. I choose error bars. And these error bars pop up. So for my, uh, for my horizontal error bars, height, the height has an uncertainty of 0.02. So I just kind of right, let's see, I uh, click this, error bars, and then I click the arrow, and I do more options. Okay, so I do a fixed value of 0.02. That's my uncertainty on the x-axis for height. How about then I click the y-axis, and you see how it switched to vertical? It just changed when I clicked the y error bar. I don't want a fixed value. I want these to be the error bars. So I do, I click... I have my error bars up, and I do, uh, over here, custom specify value. It's plus this amount, or I delete the one minus this amount, and I hit OK. And now I've got error bars.